When you think about the future, what do you picture? Flying cars, living to 200, time travel? Well, not me. I'm a simple man with simple pleasures. And what I think of is proper espresso from a handheld device. In the last few years, I've tried quite a few, but only one was so close to that pinnacle that I could literally taste it. And that was the Wakako Nanopresso. And now they're back on the scene with their brand new Pico Presso boasting not only some higher-end packaging featuring a tattooed forearm so you know it's a real barista, but some serious upgrades, accessories, and more steel components. But what really interests me is the claim that it makes, and I quote, cafe quality espresso that will rival any expensive high-end machine. So if you know me, you know that I love to put these kinds of claims to the test. So I reached out about it, and they were kind enough to send me one for the full Spro treatment. First things first, let's unbox and unpack the Pico Presso. Starting with the actual main body of the unit. Immediately, I noticed that the tactile feel of the cylinder seems a little denser and a little higher quality, but it still fits nicely in the hand and weighs only 350 grams, which is only a 14 gram increase from the previous version. Both the top cap and the bottom are removable, and inside you'll find a lot of accessories and parts. Inside the top, you've got a collapsible scoop and a cleaning brush. On the bottom, removing both covers exposes the basket for those sexy bottomless poles. And when unscrewed, you've got a sturdy metal portafilter, a 53 millimeter basket, and a shower screen with an attached rubber gasket. This other large piece is just the carrying case for the unit, which is a semi-hard exterior with a soft interior and a nice chunky zipper. Below that, you've got a branded metal funnel for your basket, which I think is a nice touch. Next to that is their new upgraded tamper, which has a sturdy steel base, which is a welcome change from their previous version that was just the bottom of a plastic scoop. And last but not least, hidden here in the middle, an unexpected but very cool addition, a baby WD T-Tool to break up those grinds for a cleaner extraction. But speaking of extractions, let's make some coffee. If you've used the Nano Presso or any manual espresso machine, the use of the Pico Presso will feel pretty straightforward and intuitive. Now to start, preheating is an optional step, but personally I am for it in all cases with this machine, which I'll explain shortly. I like to do it while I prep the coffee, so remove the top, fill the tank, seal it off, and set aside. Now remove the portafilter and snap the magnetic funnel onto the basket. It's rated for up to 18 grams, but I'm going to keep it at my standard 17 since it seems pretty full as is. It should be said that since this unit doesn't use a pressurized basket, it will need to be paired up with a decent grinder to get the most out of it. Now break out that WDT tool, give your grinds a stir to break up clumps, and a couple taps to settle. Next, give it a nice tamp, pressing until the top of the handle meets the edges of the funnel. Then swap out the funnel for the screen. To wrap up the preheat, unlatch the pump and press out the hot water. Once it runs dry, attach your portafilter, re-up with your just off boil water, reseal, and it's go time. To pre-infuse, give the pump 8 to 10 presses and then let it hang for 10 seconds or so, and then begin pressing at a nice rhythm. It'll take 20 or so pumps to start seeing coffee extracting. There should be some resistance, if it's too stiff your grind is too fine, and if it's too loose it's too coarse. But just like any other espresso machine, if all of your variables align, you'll actually get some beautiful looking extractions. Once you've hit your intended output, stop pumping and set aside onto another cup or a towel and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Finally, cleaning it is as simple as taking it back apart, knocking out the puck, and giving it a quick rinse and a wipe. Now that we've seen it make a shot, which granted does look very promising, but as we all know looks can be deceiving, so let's talk about flavor and extraction. Since the Pico Presso doesn't use a pressurized basket, the crema is legit. None of that light and foamy stuff, this is the real glossy and speckled deal. In terms of taste, honestly, I'm pretty blown away by this little thing. It produces an extremely balanced and flavorful shot from various roast levels with plenty of clarity and texture. 
It definitely has many of the characteristic qualities you'd expect from a pump or lever driven machine, with the biggest thing giving away its handheld preparation being its temperature. Even when preheated the shots still fall around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Fortunately that drop in temperature doesn't seem to have a massive effect on the extraction percentage, with a near 20% average on all of the shots I pulled in both testing and filming. In my original review of the Nanopresso, I talked about the pitfalls of comparison, and how comparing a handheld machine's shots to that of a lever or pump driven machine just really isn't that viable. But the Pico Presso has really blurred those lines. In certain aspects, it does hold its own against the Flare and the Robot, and in some cases I'd prefer the Pico Presso for its impressive texture and flavor density, but those who want their shots tongue scolding won't love it and it could use a little more insulation as the outside does get surprisingly hot, which can make the pressing a little less fun. Lastly, I wouldn't mind having a little extra space for water to pull longer shots, but you can still get 40 to 60 gram yields depending on your dose. Other than that, I don't think I really have much to say on the negative side. If you're looking for truly portable espresso from dorm room to break room and pretty much anywhere in between, this is it. With a price tag of $130, it's just over double the price of its predecessor, but definitely more than twice the machine in terms of what it can produce and the quality of the new components. I often give away my gear on Instagram as I bring in new stuff, like both of my flares and my original Nanopresso, but this one is staying right here, and that means something. The Pico Presso gives me barista tingles. But with all that said, it's time to wrap this one up, so let me know your thoughts on this video. Handheld Espresso, if you've used the Nano or the Pico Presso, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And of course, drop any other coffee questions you have in the comment section down below, and I'll see y'all next week. And a big thank you to my September Patreons, Ads, Jacob P, Christopher, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Andre, Sean, Noel, Spookus, Samantha, Claire, Stephen, Alexis, Josh B, Bound Coffee, James K, Josh, Horison, Corey C, Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Thomas B, UK Espresso, Tim, Jason C, Jerry, Matt, Ray, Home Barista Coach, Gumby, Zachary V, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, BJK Cafe, Daniel P, Mike B, Brian M, Tyler M, Barista Michael, Matthew C, JRC, Arthur L, Absolute, Stephen G, Jose, Keefe, Stephen A, Joseph M, Ed T, Techcom Advisors, Nate B, Keefe, Keith M and Happy Camper, and of course a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course a big thank you to you for watching, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Sprometheus for content throughout the week, my blog at Sprometheus.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy. <laughs>